Hey everyone, how's it going? Um, so sorry for the tech issues today. It's um, It's been a day, but hello, we are back. Welcome back to Adobe Live and today's Adobe Express Masterclass. If we're just meeting, my name is Katrina Trijos and I am the Adobe Express evangelist as well as a digital creator on the side. So shout out to everyone in chat. Thank you all so much for waiting. Hello, Steve. Hi, Steven. Um, hi, Sean. Hi, Cody. How's it going? Thank you so much for being here. Since we lost a little bit of time and I do want to get into the class, which y'all came here for, we're just gonna go and jump right into it. Um, so today we are going to be making, oh, this is not the home page, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> today we are going to be making branded graphics for social using the brand kit, which is why we are here today. Um, give me one second. Um, just got to respond to something from my team. Okay. So with that said, um, we are going to be creating a brand actually. And then um, let me just go to the home page. There you go. Sorry, I'm a little bit scrambled today. Um, and then we're going to be making some branded graphics. We're going to be quite ambitious today. Um, we did lose a little bit of time, so I might have to cut down on the assets, but it was it, it was going to be great. I can show you the, the full thing once it's finished, um, but we're going to attempt to do three branded Instagram posts, two branded photo type of posts, and one banner specifically for YouTube, and it's going to be great. Okay, so we are here. The first thing we are going to do, um, let's go to the brand center. And originally I was going to put together a brand kit from scratch, but um, I'm sure a lot of y'all pros in the chat um, have um, some idea of how to do that, but if not, I'll just walk through it. Um, so when you create a brand, uh, you just have to click on create a brand that was right here and it'll take you to this new page right here. Um, you can upload your logos just by clicking on it and then it will, um, you know, drag the PNG file um, over here. You can pick your colors and you can choose your font or upload your own branded font and then a little preview will show on here. So when it's done, I will show you what it should look like. So this is the brand kit we're working on. Shout out to Shine Webster, one of our Adobe Express ambassadors. I worked with her on this brand identity that we'll be using a lot in um, the stream. So if some of y'all attended my last masterclass, I believe it was the last one, um, I pull, I used a little bit of assets from this. So you guys got a little bit of a preview last time we were here, but this is what it looks like. So we have the logos, um, we have more logos here. And if I scroll, like we have sub marks, like she did such a good job. So, you know, if you have your own logos, create a lot of variations and all that stuff and then upload them all here. We have the colors here, the primary color. Um, and everything's already loaded, it'll look like this. And then we have our custom font, um, and then we have our body font, and then you can also add in more fonts like so. And then these are just previews of what things will look like on the Adobe Express page or Adobe Express video. Um, and then you can invite people here if you're working in a team or wanna share um, your assets with someone else. So awesome. So now we're going to go ahead and start on a new um, campaign, so. We are, let me see, let me just get rid of windows. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so now we are going to start a new project. So we're just gonna hit that plus sign. Um, oh my gosh, this menu just gets bigger and bigger every time I open it. Okay, um, let's go to Instagram posts. We're gonna create a new post today. And then we're going to actually resize to the portrait because um, on Instagram, you know, it's starting to favor larger photos, the four by five ratio photos. So um, yeah, so if you are creating like still photos or graphics for Instagram, four by five, the way to go. If you're making reels or stories, nine by 16, just so you know. The square ratio is officially out. <laughs> okay, so now we have a blank page. And so we're going to create, um, kind of like text, like templates for text graphics. And the reason why we're making templates today is because, you know, when you 
have a brand or like when you when you are on social media if you are a creator or like um a business owner or something like that um you know it, it takes a lot of time I feel like marketing takes a lot of time um and also like making like working on your craft designing also takes a lot of time so the great thing about express is that you can make templates let me know in chat if you are if you if you use templates if you templatize a lot of your social posts um I would love to know um Honestly, I'm trying to get better at it. I do have templates saved that I do reuse a couple times, especially for things like YouTube thumbnails, like things that don't really change that much. Um, and I think for like text graphics or things like that, you can definitely templatize all of that so that, um, you know, your process um, can go a little faster. Okay, so we're going to go in and make sort of like a back or not we're not going to make a background we're going to look for one of those gradient backgrounds and there's actually two ways to look for um gradient backgrounds you can go to the actual backgrounds tab oh sorry i clicked edit and then if you put in gradient it'll pull up these really awesome very vibrant gradients um, and also like different types as well um, another way that i think a lot of people don't know is if you go to the photo tab and type in gradient you will also get gradient backgrounds, but from the Adobe Stock photo collection. It is wild. <laughs> so you have two different places where you can grab um, a gradient backgrounds. So definitely try that out. If you don't find something in the backgrounds tab, try in photos. It is a great hack. Okay, so we're going to find a background that's that kind of matches the colors um, that was in our brand kit. So I'm thinking we can go with, let's look at this one. This one looks pretty good. We're gonna add it to the background and then um, we're actually gonna find all the backgrounds first. So we'll just duplicate this page, get rid of this. We're gonna work with several different um, gradient backgrounds today because I don't want all of my posts to look exactly the same. So we are going to just pull some that catch our eye and that look that, that kind of match the colors um, that was in our brand kit. And if ever you're doing this process and you're not sure if something matches, um, if you just go to colors and then you should be able to see is it in colors? I'm not even sure if it's in colors. It might be, oh, right here. I am blind. You can see with the colors that are in the current palette that you're toggled into. So um, if you don't see it here, you might have the wrong brand kit opened up. So you just click the three dots and click switch brand and then the colors will change. Um, okay, where were we? Photos. <coughs> Love the pastels. Ah, oh, thanks, Cody. Okay, let's see, let's see. Maybe, oh wait, do we need to get rid of this one? Get rid of this one. And then we're just going to open it up. Oh, this one has little speckles, cute. Okay, let's just see how it looks. Okay, so we have two that look pretty similar. So we're actually gonna drag it so that it doesn't look as similar. Oh my gosh, I love how you can zoom out in the uh, multiple pages feature and then just see how everything looks together. So I actually don't really like that. <laughs> so we're gonna scrap that and let's go with something. Let's see. I feel like I'm <laughs> internally screaming just a little bit. I'm like, ra I feel like I'm racing against the clock now, <laughs> you know? <coughs> Excuse me, um, okay. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. This one looks cool, but it might be a little bit busy. Oh, another, okay, wait. Work smarter, not harder, Katrina, okay. So the great thing about gradient backgrounds, let's just get rid of this last page, is you could take the same image and a lot of them are pretty big and then just like drag it to a different side of the gradient so that you know you still have like if I take this out um 
what's the original um so if i do take this out you can see like the entire page and then you can even make your grid or your your feed post like different areas of the gradient so that it's still the same one image if you don't want to find a new one every single time. Um, you could just do different areas of the image and it will look still pretty on brand. So we go back to add to background and then now we can have this. And then boom. Oh my gosh. I think, oh my God. <coughs> I think it looks really good. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go to do the first uh, Instagram template. So we are going to go into shapes and this one will kind of be like, maybe like a, like a quote graphic kind of thing. So I'm gonna go into shapes, gonna click more, and then I kind of want to add like little speech bubbles. I think those are super fun to indicate like if something is a quote versus like a tip or like an infographic kind of post. So let's do, um, let's do, this one just gonna drag it and then I'm gonna rotate it upward and then one thing that I think that's really fun is on Instagram your photos like on the left hand side of um, the the screen so I want to put like the little talky like thing the little what is it called 10 points to anyone in chat who knows what that's called the little nub <laughs> that indicates who's speaking um, and then we're just going to make this, let's make this white just for now. And then we're going, oh, we're going to add a funky border and let's make it black. Let's make it dramatic. There you go. How cute. So the vibe of the brand that I created was very like internet inspired. Um, very like digital elements, but also, um, I don't know, like also fun and whimsical. That's kind of the vision that I had. It's the tail. Tail. Why didn't I think of tail? That is so, <laughs> wait, that was such a simple thing to think of. Oh my goodness. Um, okay. So now we're going to add text. And since this is a template, I'm going to add just the text and then put some like sample text that later on I'll just replace and put in something else. They're just gonna wait for it to load. Okay, um, we'll do sample quote graphic. Perfect. Oh, forgot the period. And we're gonna change the font to our branded font, which will appear at the top of the list right here. And if you don't see it, you can also add fonts um, by clicking this button over here. Um, just gonna click on the brand font. It looks so good. Yay. And we're gonna adjust the spacing. Right now it sets at 35, but we'll bring it closer together just a little bit. And we're gonna center it, or actually no, we'll move it a little bit higher because we have to put like the name or something if it's not like a quote by me in that case we can just flip this over so it's not like I said it or anything um, but we'll add in a new piece of text this time we're going to change it to lat lato lato um, you think pages can handle multiple video clips Katrina maybe I know that on desktop you can't do video clips quite yet, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but on mobile, you can definitely upload a video clip and do multiple pages. So test it out, Bruce, let, let them, and, and share with the class. Let us know. I have not tested out yet, but that is a great question. Um, person. <laughs> okay. Okay, come on. Let's get it on one line. Let's get it together. Okay. Here we go. Oh, wait. Let's actually make it bold. I think bold stands out a bit more. Okay, cool. So now we're just going to line it up with the edge of this text. And then let's bring this down just a little bit. And then we'll change the colors in a bit. But right now we're going to adjust the opacity so that 
The white's not super intense on the eyes. Um, let's make the border a little bit thicker. And then now we just need a cute font. Let's do, I mean, font color. Um, let's go wild. Let's do orange. And then, should we do orange as well? I mean, that's cool. Or blue. Blue's kind of hard to read. Let's do purple. <laughs> We want to make sure there's enough contrast so that when someone is viewing the post from like super far away, like on their phone, you know, they can still read it, like read what it says. So that looks good. Back to 100. Oh, uh, 100 is wild. Okay. 75. Cool. And then so now I do want to add some sort of branded elements. So we're gonna go into the logos tab. You can see all the logos here. And I'm thinking I want to do like a, a K or something, a submark. Like this looks fun. Oh my gosh. Okay, we can put it, put the K like this like off, off to the corner a little bit. Oh my gosh, that's cute. That's cute, okay. And then, so now we're just gonna take this whole thing, gonna group it, and I wanna scale it a little bit so it takes up a little bit more of the page. And then, gonna center it. Okay, wait, maybe the K should not be grouped because it's making things off-centered. Now we can group this, and then we're gonna center this. Perfect. And then we're gonna move this, put off to the corner. And just like that, we have our first graphic. Ah, we love it. Oh, I'm so indecisive where to put this K, but we don't have time for that right now. Uh, okay, cool. So now we have the first graphic, we're good. Um, and then now we are going to move on to the next graphic, which will be a regular text graphic. Um, so similar to what we did here, but um, previously similar to what we did here, but um, different. <laughs> same, same, but different. <laughs> so we're actually, to, to save time, we're just going to ungroup this. We're going to copy by hitting Control C, next page. Control V, and so we have the text here. We're going to make it white since the background is already orange. I'm gonna get rid of the quotes, and then instead of saying quote, just so for my own purposes know what template this is, I'll say sample text graphic. <clears throat> There we go. And then we are going to add in some elements. So one of the elements in my brand is uh, sparkles. If you didn't see, if you didn't notice the sparkles in the, um, what's it called? The, uh, the logo. So we're gonna keep up that theme. Sparkle or sparkles, I don't remember what I put. Oh, I think it was this one. I think it's this one. Okay, we're gonna put that there. We're gonna put one here, and then we're gonna change it to white. And then I'm gonna put it in this corner over here. And then, you know what? Oops, I messed up, I messed up. Take that out, and then we're going to actually duplicate this. And we're gonna put it in the bottom right hand corner. We're just eyeballing, making sure the sides are even. That looks pretty good, okay. And then we're gonna go in with the line shape. Just get rid of it. Line. Mm -mm -mm. That's arrows. That's arrows, my dude. Uh, lines, here we go. 
And then we're going to just make a border around here, around like the entire graphic. So we're gonna get it as thin as we can. And then we're gonna make this white so it matches the stars. And then gonna get it to as close to the edge as we can. What if I flip it? Can I put this thing here? Yes, I can. Oh my gosh, okay. This is gonna be, this is probably gonna be the hardest part of the class and the part that will take the most concentration. <clears throat> um, okay. We'll do this. Oh, I'm not so sure. Anyways, okay, you know what? We're gonna, you know, if it's messed up, we'll fix it later. We will fix it later. That is the beauty of Express and the undo tool. <laughs> There's always a way to fix it later. I already messed up. <laughs> okay, you know what? We're just gonna we're just gonna connect the lines later. Okay. Um, okay, and then now we're going to duplicate this. Gonna rotate like this. I feel like I s I'm sounding like that one like SpongeBob episode where he's I don't <laughs> but he's just like, and some of this, and some of that. <laughs> Let me know if y'all know what episode that is. Oh my gosh, what did I do? Here we go. Um, wait, am I, am I tripping? Hold on. It is disappearing. Hello? <gasps> it's there. Wait, it's there. Wait. It's there, but it's not there. Oh my gosh. You know what that means? It's time for a refresh. It's time for a tab refresh. Please hold. Okay, we are back. So this was the last save point. Invisible line is not here. Come in, come in. And then, just gonna connect the lines. Okay, looking good. This will probably need to be extended. I kind of want it to be here, which is fine. We want it to be in the middle of the sparkles. Okay, and then we are going to, let's see what happens. Let's group it and duplicate it and then rotate it. And then, <laughs> did I just do something? Did I just do something like smart? Hold on. Wow. I definitely did not do this when I was practicing for this class. <laughs> okay, so we'll need to fix the alignment a little bit of some of these lines, but oh my gosh. <clears throat> I definitely put in each line individually when I was planning this class. That is hilarious. I feel like I learn things like as I'm doing the class, which is funny. Uh, catch my own self by surprise. Okay, um, so next we're going to add in our branded element, which will be a sub logo. This one. Yes, okay. White logos are really tricky. As you can see, you can't see it um, if it's a white <laughs> logo. So just be mindful of that if you have a white variation of your logo. I'm just gonna pop it down here so people know who this graphic is from and boom, graphic number two is finished. Okay, so next we are on to our third one, which will be kind of like a tweet graphic. Um, so this one, I've definitely showed this design before that I've done with the, the three layered boxes. 
So this is great for if um, you want to achieve that same effect. Um, so we're just gonna go in with a square shape and then gonna make it as big or as small as we want, depending on the size of the tweet graphic. But if you are making tweet graphics, I just learned this over the weekend, but you know how if you're sharing someone else's tweet on your feed, um, instead of taking a screenshot of it on desktop, you should take a screenshot of it on your mobile because the text is bigger, the name is bigger, it's easier to read, and it's like in a more like longer kind of dimension, I would say, versus on desktop, the text is smaller, the graphics actually more like landscape, more like wide, um, and it's, you know, if we're creating for mobile, it should be mobile optimized, so. Pro tip, if you're sharing tweets from like your favorite like thought leaders or designers or something like that. Screenshot in mobile. Okay. Um. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Do like four, four, four looks pretty good. Okay, and then we're just going to duplicate this three times. Um, and I would have loved, oh, wait, actually, no, this is great. This is great. Cause I was going to say if it was going like, so we're, I like to layer things like going up and to the left. Um, but this is great because I can just take the layer, bring it to the front, take this layer, bring it to the front. Boom. There it is. Okay. I'm going to group this and we're going to center it by using the snapping line. So if it's both, if both of the lines are pink, you are in perfect center. Um, now we're going to ungroup and then we're going to change the colors to my brand colors. So there's no rhyme or reason for this. If I want to switch out the colors, super easy, just, sorry, just clicking on them and then it'll show up right here. I can click whatever I want. Um, and then, oh my gosh, copy paste, boom, control C. And then we're gonna go here, control V. Here we go, we'll make it black. And this is just placeholder text. So the tweet will go inside this box or even replace this box altogether. So that's kind of like, the idea behind it and then you can um, resize the boxes behind it to make it fit the the tweet and stuff so insert tweet graphic and tweet graphics are like my favorite pieces of content to post sometimes if I have nothing um, and I see someone posted something either controversial or compelling or you know something really interesting that I want to add commentary to I feel like it's a great way to um, give your perspective and provide extra content. Um, cool. And then now I want to add like a, what's it called? A Twitter logo here. So we can just pull there. I did not get their logo beforehand. So let me just grab it really quick. Here we go, drag and drop. Honestly, that is the best feature ever. <laughs> Just dragging from your desktop and bringing it on here without having to upload it. It's great. So we could like put this here. And then if we wanted to, we could put the sub mark like down here. It could be like a circle or we could use this K one. Something like that. Eh, I don't like that. Let's do the circle. Let's do the white circle again. Just because I like how the gradient background looks through the transparent K. Cool. And then here we have our finished tweet graphic template. So now moving on, we have some photos to use. So we are going to duplicate it and I think 
I have time for 10, 15. Hmm, one photo maybe, maybe two, we'll see. Um, so we're just gonna get rid of all of this. And then we're going to insert a photo. Um, let's do Lightroom. And then let's look at some New York photos. Ignore all my selfies. These are <laughs> spoilers. I'm leaking. This is this is all stuff that'll be on my Instagram later. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, my photos are not loading. That is okay. There's only a couple of photos I'm looking for. Let's see which one. This one. Here we go. So we're just going to add this to, oh wait, no, before we add it to the background, we're going to duplicate this photo. And then this may not be like a template per se, but it could be like a nice little formula for if you do want to be more creative with your um, photos on IG. Um, so we're actually going to remove this background and we're going to put text behind me. So this is how you do it if you wanted to know how to make those kinds of graphics. So look at my little cutout, there's two of me now. Okay, so now we're going to add some text. We're gonna add, where did I go? Where's this? This is New York, okay. So we're gonna do new. Change it to that, bring it here. We're gonna duplicate it and then York. Okay. And then we're just going to make the text a little bit bigger. What is this? 324. We'll do the same thing. 324. Oh, maybe let me make it smaller. York is uh, a little bit bigger. 205. Well, we'll mess with it eventually. Um, and then we're going to put my little, my little cutout above the words like that so the words are behind me and I think the picture is a little bit bigger when we snapped it to the background and so we're just going to nudge it so that you can't see so it doesn't look like I have four fingers <laughs> uh, okay that looks pretty good okay so now we're just going to make it big so that it looks so that you can tell that this says New York Mm -mm -mm. And then we'll make the New York a bit bigger. We'll put the Y behind me and then we'll have the O kind of pop out. The thing when you, if you want to put like yourself over text or like put an object over text, it's important to make sure that like the word, like you can tell what it says, even if you're cutting, covering up a letter. And I feel like that's where a lot of people like make the mistake where sometimes they'll put like an object over letters and I have no idea what the word says afterwards. <laughs> so the more obvious you can be with it, then the better. So I'm thinking the O is pretty easy to like forego. <laughs> Just because I feel like if you read the whole thing, your brain kind of auto fills that this is New York and also the Brooklyn Bridge is behind me. I can make this a little bit bigger as well. And then I can cover up the E and the W just a little bit. It's it's good that my body's kind of angled the same way as the, the W so that, and, and the edge of the E so that it's not, you don't have to guess <laughs> like w what letters they are, but yeah. Okay, this looks pretty good. And then, so now we're going to add in some sparkle elements. Mm -mm -mm, like this one. Oh my gosh, this one is nice. Gonna click on it. Gonna make it white. And then we'll add it like this. 
And then uh, originally I was going to just do two of these and then was going to work on another one. But since we are slowly approaching time, we are going to improvise <laughs> and we're going to add in maybe a brush effect or something. Um, so you can either use shapes to add different branded elements. Um, if you have them uploaded to your CC libraries, you can um, pull from there as well. Or if you don't have either of those things, you can definitely do, um, what's it called? Uh, what are these called? Design assets. <laughs> So you have acrylics, these are so fun. So we just need to find like either one that's like orange or like a red, um, maybe like a light blue, that would be fun. Something like this, but I kind of want a bit more energy. So let's try this one, let's go crazy. Oh my gosh, wild. It looks like an actual like paint stroke. So I like to add, I like to add like little embellishments and stuff on the corners of my photos sometimes just to like give it a little, give it a little something, you know? So really you just need to play around with whatever you like um, to like amp up your photo, but you could totally leave it at like the text, maybe some like shapes or something like that. You totally do not have to use um, design assets or anything. Like this is pretty fun. And then maybe if we added like, let's do like a second one and then let's like just cover up the sky a little bit. Maybe like we could do something like that. You can layer design assets together or if we wanted to like do one swoosh, swoosh, swoop, whatever in one corner and then do like one in like the other corner just has like a little bit balanced. That's pretty, that would be pretty cool too. Oh my gosh, that looks so good. Okay. You could do whatever you like and have as much fun with it. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Oh my gosh. Okay, here we go. So this is, I think this is the final photo. I think it looks really good. And then so if I want to save this as a template, you know, this kind of shows like the example that we're going for. Um, so yeah, so if I wanted to replace the photo, it'll already have the text, it'll already have some design assets on it and I can just mess with it as much as I wanted to. Okay, so now we have a couple minutes left. Um, I don't think we can get to the banner today because we were so short on time, but originally, um, you know, this is pretty good to start. Um, I think, um, if you were to create like a YouTube banner or something like that, I think you could easily take like one of these, let's duplicate it here, click on it. You can easily just resize for like, let's see, like channel art, YouTube channel art, boom, there you go. And then, you know, move things around. Like we're not, we're not gonna mess with these lines today. <laughs> that would take up so much time, but you could adjust the lines and then like turn this into channel art itself. So just put it in the middle and then just really just move things around. And I think y'all kind of like get the idea if you've been watching the classes for a while that you can easily just resize graphics for any use case that you want. And it's all on brand too. You're really just repurposing the content and just creatively positioning it in a different way for wherever you are trying to post to. Um, oh, actually, we have a logo. Let's get rid of this. And then we can just replace that whole text. Mouse, why are you doing this to me? Um, with a logo. Also, y'all, this is my new official logo, which is my name, yay. <laughs> And it totally fits on a channel banner. If a shameless plug for my YouTube channel, um, if you just search me up on YouTube, you can already see the banner that I was going to make for this class, if you wanted to see what it looked like. Um, but I made a channel banner for um, this and it's already up on my channel if you wanted to check it out. Um, but yeah, just something like that. 
super easy and then uh, with especially youtube banner it's really easy to guess where like the safety lines are you just aim it for straight in the middle and then um also if you get it kind of small like this you can adjust the crop and the zoom when you're choosing the focal point of the banner so that's that's always great too let's flip this boom so that it fits oh my gosh yes boom and done super super easy and if you zoom out we have so many branded graphics and yeah we made this all just from the brand kit that we did so you can create so much with this plus the multiple pages feature so if you haven't checked it out definitely do so 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 sorry this class was a little bit short today but you know what can you do we just adapt and i feel like we got through a whole lot of content for the time we had together so with that, thank you so much for watching today's session. I hope you got inspiration and value from today's class. And don't forget to subscribe to Adobe's YouTube channel for more content just like this. And thanks again so much for watching. I will see you all in the next time. Or I'll see you all in the next time. I'll see you all in the next one. <laughs> all right. Bye, friends.